Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Dat Destroyer and Oat Destroyer books. I am here today with actually my professor in college, Professor Louis Blois, a noted mathematician. He actually created most of the questions in the Dat Destroyer math section as well as the Math Destroyer. Professor, we'd like to see you do some questions for us. It looks like we got some good function type questions today. Yes, we're talking about okay. domain and range today. And the domain and range of a function is something that is addressed in a standard pre-calculus course. Let's define what domain and range are. Domain is the set of all allowable input values x to a function. All the allowable values x that could be input into a function. The range is the set of resulting output values y of a function. So, if you're asked on the dat, say, find the domain and range of uh, an expression, here's how we go about doing that. Uh, but if there are no restrictions, we can explicitly restrict the input values of x, but if there are no restrictions explicitly stated, then we're looking for the implied domain and range. That is, the domain and range as, as, as resulting from a con the algebraic context of the function. So here we have 5x plus 7. Well, I think we all know what this looks like, 5x plus 7. It's a straight line, right? It's a straight line. And the domain, the domain is going to be, and we express the domain in set notation because it represents a set of numbers, the set of x such that well, what are the restrictions on x here? If there's no otherwise stated restrictions, x could be any number whatsoever, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we can either write negative infinity is less than x is less than positive infinity. Another way to write this is x is an element of the set of all real numbers. There are no restrictions on x. Likewise, what, are the res what, what is the resulting output of the y values? Well, there are none. You can see that the resulting y values are going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the range, I'll write it over here, I'll erase this, the range is going to be the set of y values that are exactly the same. x going from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right? Okay, now let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. h of x equals the square root of x minus 8. Now, we're going to infer what the uh, domain is by looking at the algebraic context. Here we have a square root, and I think as you know, we're underneath the square root, we cannot have a negative number and still be within the domain of real numbers. So x minus 8 has to be non-negative. So we're going to write that like this, x minus 8 has to be greater than or equal to 0, and if we want explicitly a particular set of x values, we're going to solve for x, adding 8 to both sides. x is greater than or equal to 8, and there is our domain, okay? x is greater than or equal to 8, that's the domain of this function. Now the range is a little bit more tricky. Okay, for the range, we have to either look at a graph, which is what's usually done, but in simple expressions like this, we can just fall back on some basic mathematical principles. We know that the square root of a number is always going to be non-negative. The square root of 4 is defined as 2. Not as 2 and negative 2, but just 2. So we know that this expression can never be negative, okay? So the range here is going to be, well, if x is 8, it's going to be 0. And since the domain is x, all values of x greater than 8, this is going to take on values between 0 and positive infinity. So that means that y is going to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? Because of this square root. And there we have the domain and the range of this expression. Okay, now let's look at a third example where we're going to have to also uh, examine the input value and the output value from the context of the algebra. We have 4x plus 12 divided by x. Now, right away, if you're a good algebraist, you should know there's one x value. Of all the x values, positive, negative, zero, there's one x value that cannot be input into this equation. Negative values are fine, okay? You can put in negative 1, negative 5, negative 10, but the one value that cannot be put in here is zero. I cannot have zero in the denominator. It's just one of those mathematically forbidden 
rules, okay? So the domain is going to be x is a member of all real, it's all possible real numbers, except x cannot be equal to zero. Okay, that settles that. You can see it from the context. Now, what about the range of this? This is going to be a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to expand this so we can see it a little bit better. We're going to write this as 4x divided by x plus 12 over x. This becomes 4 plus 12 over x. Okay, and now from this expression, we're going to examine what the range, what the possible output values are going to be. Now, x can't be zero, we know that. But as x approaches zero, what happens? This gets larger and larger, or in the case of x uh, going to zero from the negative side, it's going to have larger and larger negative numbers. As x, what we're going to be looking at here is as x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, this number becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, either positive or negative, if, if we're going to negative infinity. So we're always adding something to 4. No matter how infinitesimal, we're either adding something to 4 or subtracting something from 4. But since x can never reach infinity, the value will never reach 4. We're always going to be adding or subtracting something from 4. So that means for the range of this uh, uh, function, the range is going to be y is all possible real numbers except that never attainable number 4. So y is not equal to 4 from the algebraic context. So there are a few problems in domain and range. Okay, I hope that helps you guys out on some real, that was really solid work. Oh, yeah. Right. It was like yesterday I was in your class. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, right. it's, I mean you've never seen more fair exams than Professor Boyce. My exams, I will rip your head off <laughs> um, in organic chemistry. Um, I, you have no idea if I ever unleashed on to you guys. We won't, but, but, we won't mention the year that took Yes, place. we won't mention the year. <laughs> but if you ever wanted to see a fair exam, Professor Blois is the man. Your exams man. were as wonderful as oh, these. Thanks, these thanks, thanks. Right. Man had landed on the moon by the time we had. All right, be quiet. All right. All right um, I will see you guys in study group. Good day to you.